What's going on chocolate people? This is Dylan with Manoa Chocolate and today we are going to talk about one of my personal favorite parts of running a business which is building a brand and in a lot of ways this has never been easier. Right now if you have a phone, a smartphone, you can build a brand for free. You don't have to pay anything. In fact we've played around with marketing a little bit this last year and found that social media is the best way to build your brand because that's where people's attention are everyone's on their phone i'll come back to that a little bit later but i've really enjoyed building and learning how to build a brand over the last 10 years so i've been now i started in about 2010 and it's now 2020 and the hardest part is starting so those first few steps into uh, developing your concept learning how to do what you're going to do and then forming the image. And so for Manoa, it took about nine or 10 months to choose a name and develop a logo. And this is something that I'm happy I spent a lot of time doing and asking a lot of people's opinions because you don't wanna redo this. You don't wanna have to rename your company a couple years in and then you lose a lot of the recognition that you've built up because a lot of this is just time. And the longer that we've been in business, it's like a snowball. And so I've noticed many different aspects of this snowball effect with time, and it's just growing and growing. You know, it's the, the drop of water causing the rings in a pond. So step one for us was when I first started, I was making chocolate and just giving it away. I'd give it to my friends and family, and the reason is because I wanted to get the feedback on whether people liked it or not, and if they asked for more. And so when people started to say, hey, that was pretty good, I'd like more of that, my mom's birthday is coming up, can I buy some of the chocolate you made for her? I was like, okay, now I'm on to something. And so that ha happened enough that I knew I could try and take this to the next step. And at the time I was in college, so I was um, maybe 23 years old, I had one year left of university, and at that point I didn't really care about university anymore, I just wanted to start a business that I could see value in. And so that's the next part of, of a brand. In fact, it's the main part of building a brand is just adding value for your customers and making enough money to keep doing it. So we're gonna come back to that again later. But giving it away for free was really valuable, especially because I didn't have overhead at the time. I didn't have to pay rent or utilities. The raw materials I was buying, super small batches of beans, and it was still really fun. As soon as you take that next step and you start to have to pay rent, have to hire employees, it gets less fun for a couple of years at least because it's just a, a staying alive at that point and trying to get all of your supporters or, or your future customers to continue to come back. So this is really tricky. But the name and the logo and the packaging are way better to do before you have to pay overhead. So spend a bunch of time coming up with a package and a design, Add, uh, ask all your friends and family what they think of it, and then eventually choose something. So that's the other part. You have to be okay with moving forward, even if your product you don't think is perfect, because you can always improve it later, but if, you, if you're a perfectionist to the point of fault, in this case, you're never gonna produce anything. So you have to at least be okay with good enough to move forward on certain parts. Otherwise, you will never reach your goals. And as we build our brand, one of the things that I'm interested in is a bigger brand. I don't want a small company, and so I am thinking big. And in this regard, advertising our brand, I, I take certain steps in order to advertise our brand that are not common. We have a, a multifaceted approach to how we do our sales and marketing. And so we've got different revenue streams that keep our business growing and stable, as well as the marketing in order to support that. So Instagram ads, Facebook ads, these are things that we put more attention into because we're seeing much more positive returns from it as far as social awareness or, or brand awareness globally. It's never been easier to reach a global market. I'm shocked at how many people in Mumbai and in Manila and in Caracas 
are following Manoa Chocolate and super passionate about what we're doing. And we're paying Instagram to teach people everything that we've often learned the hard way. And so this is the value that we're trying to give back, but also working on growing our own brand this way. So we're helping the industry, the craft chocolate industry, become to improve as well as growing our brand within that. By sharing everything that we do, we're able to reach a really wide audience and social media is practically free. So some of the things that we learned the hard way last year was actually paying for printed ad space in magazines and running promotions and uh, ho in hotel channels that would tell people to come visit us. That was very ineffective compared to just using the free platforms that were out there that hit algorithms and all of a sudden 100,000 people saw what we were doing. So that was far more efficient for us than paying for you know, $600 a month for ad, uh, running ads in, in print. That's going away. That's a waste of money in, in our case. So when you're giving the chocolate to your friends and family, you're always trying to improve. And so when we finally opened a shop, a brick and mortar shop, the main point of that was to educate our customers and start retailing. This is how we started to build a nice solid customer base that really liked what we were doing so that we could tell our story. A lot of building a brand is people buying your story. And I assure you our chocolate was not nearly as good then as it is now, but people still continued to support us and liked our mission and our story. And as the brand gets bigger, it's been a lot more fun because it becomes leverage. There's enough recognition of it that other companies want to partner with you. And that becomes really valuable because then you get cross promotions. So if we start partnering with breweries or distilleries like we're, we're currently doing, these are wonderful projects and super fun. So one of the things that we just did is a whiskey chocolate bar, which I can't wait for everyone to try because it's one of the best chocolate bars I think we've ever made. And it's such a neat project working with another local brand. So those are some of the benefits of a brand getting bigger and, and using the leverage from it. Let, let's look at an example of, let's say, Patagonia. When you buy a Patagonia jacket, you can just inherently trust that they really care about the quality and the environment behind creating that product. Whole Foods, people love shopping at Whole Foods, it costs a bit more, but you know that, say that salmon was probably a lot better cared for and is probably better quality than if you were to just go to another supermarket and buy it cheaper. So these are the things that brands tell us, it's almost a feeling. And so that's what we've been trying to give over the last few years is almost a feeling that you can trust us to do the very best job we possibly can on making chocolate. That's our brand. And it's also one of the most fun and challenging aspects of this whole thing. But remember, it's never been easier than now. And every year it should continue to get easier as more people are on their phones. So take advantage of that. Good luck. Grow your chocolate brand. Cheers.